Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully you're in the right place. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about Okta's holistic approach to identity and how you can leverage Okta to centralize your on-prem, hybrid and cloud identity credentials. If we haven't met before, it's wonderful to meet you, albeit virtually. Um, my name is Grace Mayer and I proudly head up our support and our pre-sales team at over here at Summerford. And I'm also really proud to say that I am also an Okta technical champion. So nowadays, when we think about IT, we think about technology and we think about security, I think it's changed a lot in the way that we actually view those types of things. I think if we go back a few years, quite often IT was described as, you know, something that you just throw in the basement, you know, keep, keep whatever it is down there and just hope that everything's on. And we also then kind of moved into an approach of, okay, well, IT does need to support the business more because realistically everything the business does relies on that IT. And now I think we're moving into an age where businesses have actually realized that by putting a focus on that IT, by putting a focus on the security on their, um, the way that they do things internally, they can actually really improve their customer experience, whether that's internal customers, such as employees, partners, or people that they work with, with third parties, or whether that's external customers, you know, such as in a retail or services industry. Now, because of this move, I think a lot of businesses have realized that technology has the power to unleash literally anything within your business. It can unleash creativity, it can unleash productivity, it can really help you to give your end users the power to be able to do their roles effectively, but also the features and functions and um, applications that they can use to actually take their role one step further um, and really kind of get to what would be like the gold standard of, of their work. Now, of course, in the more recent years with people moving to cloud and also hybrid working being very common now, and I think as well in part um, due to the pandemic and us all working from home, we've changed the way that we've been viewing our IT infrastructure and architecture and really been looking at ways to put more into the cloud and really being able to utilize cloud platforms, whether those are public or private, have really changed everything. Now, when we talk about the traditional perimeter, we mean, you know, taking that approach of, okay, we're gonna use VPNs to get in, we've got our firewall, um, and you might have different kind of edge-based um, protection, whether that's software, you might have some hardware involved. And realistically, now that we've moved away from that kind of everything in one place approach, you know, all of the servers are in the basement or something, <laughs> then it makes it a lot more difficult to actually go ahead and secure across all of those different platforms, locations, and different ways of access as well. You know, there's not unfortunately a common way um, to be able to access all of these things, whether they're, you know, on-premise servers, applications on those, or, you know, um, EC2s and AWS or looking at things like um, VMs and Azure, all of those are all secured and kind of use the identity in a slightly different way. Now, because of this kind of variety, I think, of variability between the way that security is done between on-prem, hybrid and cloud platforms has really led to a rise in public breaches. And this is you know, for figures of 2020. Um, but here we can see that we've had 9,000 public breaches kind of reported. Of those breaches, 10 billion records were exposed, which I think is completely mind boggling. <laughs> Of those 9,000 breaches, over 80% of those were caused by lost or stolen credentials. And I think this really hammers home why identity and putting an identity strategy at the forefront of your security strategy is really imperative nowadays, especially as we have this hybrid way of working and also a rapidly changing work environment. So, you know, relying on things like um, Active Directory, ADFS, Nowadays is really kind of relying on older technology, bootstrapping together to try and make it work in the new kind of world. Whereas what would be much more suitable is obviously kind of taking a refreshed approach to your identity and how you're going to control that access, control those users' credentials, whether that's um, in Active Directory, whether that's using something else, whether you're going to look at maybe doing HR as a master. Um, there are loads of different ways and methodologies of working with identity now. 
And I think this is where Okta really plays a pivotal role in being able to literally allow you the flexibility to take which methodology works for you, but have the platform work in a holistic way, no matter which way you go. Now, of course, companies are moving to the cloud for their employees for ease of use for end users and also ease of use management for IT and infrastructure management as well. But the issue that we have is that, of course, being able to access cloud platforms and on-prem stuff can sometimes need extra credentials, extra usernames and passwords, and basically that's extending your attack surface out larger and larger every time. I always say for every one password that you give somebody, that's another one that they're just going to write down or tell somebody or make the same password as everything else that they have. So, you know, when their Facebook password gets leaked in a breach, then you know their work password and everything else has been gone as well <laughs> and this unfortunately is why millions of people do use Okta every day well I say unfortunately it's very fortunate for us but unfortunately if you ever have been hit with um you know that panic of oh gosh my password's been leaked and that really is everything that I use for um everything so millions of people use Okta every day and they use it for different use cases of course and we have hundreds of different types of use cases, whether that's users using it, businesses using it, sorry, just to allow their users access to applications. It could be businesses using it for their customer identity management, or it could be businesses looking at securing um, on-premise applications or hybrid applications with Okta. And the reason why they choose Okta is because we kind of have three main goals. The first is always on. And in this, we're calling it always available. And you're often, um, hear Okta refer to this always on architecture. Now by this we mean that we offer a 100% uptime. I literally mean 100% not 99.99999% recurring <laughs> and we actually are so proud of this that we'll publish our uptime at okta.com forward slash trust. You can see it all there um, in 15 minute segments. Now, we are able to keep this always on architecture because we really build the platform for scale. So we cluster you several times. We have different availability zones with your org set up in it. So we are always ready to fail over. We always have a backup and we always try and make sure that to you, you never even notice that change. And of course, we have world class security built in. You would hope and expect that if you're moving your identity to the cloud, that that cloud platform that's containing your crown jewels is going to be as secure as secure can be. And of course, we have all of the attestations you can shake a sticker. SOC type 2, um, ISO 27001, 27018, HIPAA, FEVRA, CSA STAR, you name it, Okta's got them all. So Okta really seeks to connect anyone with literally anything, whether that's an application, whether that's a server, whether that's an API, or even now with mobile devices. And Okta is really proud to say that it really is the world's most secure and reliable identity product. If we look at um, security reviews, if we look at the um, attestations that we've had, they've all come out with glowing reports. And if we look at our uptime, nobody is kind of in the realms that Okta is in terms of their always on architecture. And I really want to emphasize that always on. <laughs> And as I say, we've got SOC2 Type 2, CSA Star, ISO 27001, 27018, HIPAA, and FedRAM. See, I did all of them from memory before. <laughs> and as I say, um, we've got, well, they are reviewing it on old figures. See, I said 100%, not 99.99% recurring. But as you can see, we've got literally um, a, a point decimal place very, very far back where um might have been down. But realistically, if we look at 2020 figures, if we look at how we've done so far this year, I think we'll probably be um, pretty much at that 100% goal. And as you can see with the system status, we publish this also in your Okta org. You can also see it on the trust page as well. So you can see if there's any other Okta services that you're using, such as the AD agent, things like that, that may potentially have an issue. And 
If there is an issue, again, we um, replicate those. So you just get failed over with the AD agent that is something installed on your servers. So it could be, you know, somebody's just restarting the server, it could be an upgrade um, or maybe they're migrating it. So a lot of the time it's normally more down to um, normal kind of service operations in your business. And of course we can hire um, we can architect, sorry, um, a hierarchy of different agents to work around that for you. So you never have to worry. And the world's biggest organizations depend on Okta now. We can see some of the biggest names here in many different areas coming from um, kind of major players in software and kind of IT space with ServiceNow, Adobe, we've got HP there. Um, and users like Slack and even T-Mobile. We've got some healthcare users such as Cardinal Health, and there is a host of other um, use cases that you can see online as well, if you are interested in any healthcare ones, which I'll go through today. And of course, even things like um, sports teams, MGM Resorts is a major user of Okta. And if you've ever used the MLife program, then you've used Okta. I always use that as the best intro because nine times out of ten a lot of people have used an account on one of these services and so they can see for themselves how seamless that login is. Something that I always really welcome from MGM is the fact that if I'm ever moving around their different websites or their different hotels um, or casinos, if you're over in um, Vegas or something like that, it keeps me logged in so that I can just move around and book what I like, see tickets. And it's also going to show me prices to reflect my membership status, which is a really nice feature for an end user rather than having to kind of work it out yourself. And I really do mean that <laughs> almost everyone relies on Okta. There are literally thousands of customers across the world. Now we back our kind of statements up with some facts. So of course I would always say that Okta, and I have mentioned before, is the world's most secure and reliable identity product. And you would hope so as well if you're moving your identity to the cloud. But just to really show how big Okta is as an identity platform. 50 million monthly unique users here. We do 1.2 billion daily web requests and we do 100, 111 million daily authentication. So as you can see, it really is used by everyone everywhere and can literally do pretty much anything in terms of your identity. So we've spoken a lot about identity so far, and I just wanted to go into the ecosystem that we have of identity um, cloud and also the integration network. Now, our integration network is really what sets Okta apart. We have an entirely pre-built set of applications for you to use, and we have the largest ecosystem of any identity provider. So that means we have the most amount of pre-built applications for you to plug and play for your SSO, um, rather than having to you know, do, the, do the configuration yourself. You just have to literally put in your information about your specific application, um, your domain name, et cetera, if it's required, and then you're good to go. Now, of course, this makes setup super easy and quick, and it also means that you can get set up with Okta in days rather than weeks or months. And that really is a massive um, help for users because if you're ever doing anything with identity, it's you know that panic of how long will this take and how long potentially will users have to use a different method as kind of a workaround for right now. Now, that sits on top of our Okta integration network are our different products. And these are the different models that you can really kind of pick and choose as you wish. Now, our main service that kind of powers everything is our universal directory. And this is what's really kind of integral to Okta as a platform. Now, our universal directory allows users to have one single um, account where they have all of their different application access credentials, API access credentials, et cetera, underneath that in one centralized place. 
This makes it much easier for the admins to administrate, of course, because they've only got one location to go into to see all of that information about that user. But it also means that assigning the correct level of permissions is really easy to do and also very easy to audit as well, which is often the problem is that, you know, you might set everything up perfectly on day one, but a lot will change from day one to, say, a year later. <coughs> Now, of course, um, what sits on top of that is our single sign-on. And I think the single sign-on is nothing new to a lot of people. We're used to kind of having one place to log into a lot of our applications. But with our SSO, we can leverage different products such as our API access management and our Okta access gateway and advanced server access to allow you single sign-on not only to your applications, but into APIs and um, you know actual physical or virtual servers as well. And of course, um, into any on-premise applications that you may have also. So it really does allow you a full um, SSO scope, I would say, rather than you know just saying, okay, yeah, we're doing SSO, but only for our applications. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure how single that sign on is then. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Now, what sits um, on top of our single sign-on is our adaptive multi-factor. And I think a lot of people are used to using multi-factor now in their day-to-day -day lives. We use um, two-factor authentication on social media, on the emails even, um, and a lot of applications that you might use on your phone or personally now also leverage two-factor. But what's um, kind of more that Okta gives you is the fact that we have this adaptive multi-factor. And by adaptive, we mean not only on a policy basis. So you can say, for example, if people are signing in from um, the office, then don't don't ask them for a second factor. But if they're signing in from home, then maybe you want to. But we also have our threat detection um, on this, which allows you. It allows you, sorry, <laughs> you coughing there. Um, it allows you to have Okta actually point out any potentially um, and toward IP addresses that it's seen, any kind of um, high levels or excessive um, potential logins, and it will go ahead and then either ask for extra factors to make sure that that is correct or block that access as well. So there's a lot of different ways that you can leverage that adaptive MFA, whether you just wanna go on policy basis for what you say is kind of allowed or not and when you'd like to prompt it, but there's also the kind of um, automated features that you can enable in Okta as well to just get that little bit of extra kind of security. Now with our MFA, you can use loads of different factors, whether you'd like to use a um, text message, if you'd like to use Google Authenticator. Um, there's also the Okta Verify app, which is our own app, which is a great one because it also integrates with things like Face ID or um, Touch ID, <laughs> forgot what they call the fingerprint scanner, um, or any kind of um, fingerprint identity or face, face identity on Android. <clears throat> Now, of course, what really kind of allows us to keep this holistic identity platform secure and safe is our lifecycle management. And this, for me, is really what I love about Okta the most. <laughs> and it's just because it really does make life so much easier and so much simpler. And even our, our business itself has benefited from Okta lifecycle management. And I myself am one of the people who used to set up our users. And it used to take us, for example, several hours to get a user set up and ready if it was on their first day. Now with Okta Lifecycle Management, we can do it in about 10 minutes because the LCM module goes ahead and uses the group-based assignments and things like that to go ahead and say, yes, they should have access or no. And it also goes ahead and then creates those application accounts for us on the day that they're meant to be joining. And you can also use just-in-time provisioning with some of our applications or called JIT. And that really helps you with lifecycle management and the, sorry, the license management of lifecycle management. <laughs> Say that three times. Um, because it only starts that account and starts using that license on the first time that they try to log in. So rather than, for example, setting them up a month in advance, and then, you know, you're paying for that license a month in advance, you can go ahead and only have it enabled on that day one and they don't notice any difference. They still have their access straight 
right away but your business hasn't had to pay for an extra license for a month and although it may only seem <laughs> kind of trivial for a month by month it can definitely add up and especially when it's licensing for a very high value applications that are sometimes very expensive um, those can really benefit from using that just-in-time provisioning. Now, I just wanted to go into a little bit more detail about how Okta integrates cloud and on-prem systems and why Okta Access Gateway is really set apart from all of the rest. Now, traditionally, we might have used something like a web access firewall or um, maybe we use some, uh, something like Shibboleth to allow um, users access into on-premise applications. Now, Okta kind of takes a different approach to this, and we see it as, well, it's better to do all of your security policies, provisioning, and seeing all of that access in one location than having separate locations for that just to manage those on-prem applications. And often those on-prem applications can be some of the most critical applications within a business, such as their HR app, the internet, or even the ERP. Now, Okta Identity Cloud with our Access Gateway basically allows you to deploy the agent out onto a server and then use that as a kind of gateway to say yes or no, authenticate there, and then allow them access into those applications. So this allows you to manage your security policies and how you'd like to do that via Okta, and you don't have to change the application code, and there's no need for you to either. This is really, really important, especially when we're dealing with some very old legacy applications that maybe don't even allow you the functionality to even do that if you wanted to now. Now, this provides a unified end user experience because, of course, they're only accessing all of these apps through the Okta platform. But it also allows you a, sorry, a much more secured approach in terms of your policies, in terms of the um, permission levels that you're giving that user and also prevents against just unnecessary access. You know, a lot of the time, if you are provisioning users into on-premise apps and you're having to do it in a secondary um, portal or secondary service or application, then that often means that the groups in that are not as well managed as they might be in your normal identity platform. And of course that can lead to major security pitfalls um, and Unfortunately, as they are kind of normally your critical apps there, that can lead to a major problem. Now, as I was mentioned before, Okta is very, very quick to deploy. Um, takes literally days instead of weeks and months. And here we can see some examples. So as I mentioned before, MGM Resorts is a massive user of Okta. Over 65,000 users worldwide, and they deployed um, within three weeks there. I think one of my favorite ones is using um, the Bose use case because I actually used to work for Bose many, many years ago. <laughs> when I was uh, in school, I, I had a Saturday job there um, and they deployed in 20 weeks. They had SSO and also lifecycle management for provisioning, 29,000 users and very, very quick to um, go ahead and deploy. And literally when I talk about this automated provisioning, I mean that all of the applications were automatically provisioned for those users on day one. So now they don't ever have to worry about, you know, setting things up on the fly. They never have to worry about other security policies being followed because it's all being done within one holistic platform. Now, I just wanted to take some time to go through a lot of different use cases um, because there are so many different um, kind of ways in which that people are using Okta. And I really wanted to shine a light on all of the different ways and the trends that we're seeing within these departments as well. So within our healthcare customers, and we have a whole host of healthcare customers, as you can see there on the left, we've seen a lot of kind of trends to value-based care for patients. And this is a lot in the um, US as well. Within the UK and the US, we've noticed a lot more changing to um, mobile working and cloud working and kind of engaging patients in a slightly different way. And I think as well, you know, of course, the pandemic has contributed to this as well. We also have a lot of sensitive data and personally identifiable information now residing outside of the firewall, so in the cloud. So it's now even more essential to make sure, you know, to of course abide by HIPAA and things like that, that um, things are not potentially accessible by people that they shouldn't be. 
but also that the security for accessing those is managed in a really kind of um, holistic way. Now, of course, this can create many problems by having this kind of change in working. And it's always, you know, those teething issues. But Octo has really been able to assist a lot of our healthcare patients with this by allowing them to deliver omnichannel experiences, whether that's, you know, moving a patient, for example, they come into a &E, they get triaged, they stay in, they have um, whatever they need, whether it's a course of treatment, whether it's an operation, whatever it might be, and then they may get onto pharmacy and then outpatient treatment. Now, of course, that's lots of different channels of services, people, and different departments across many different um, facilities. And Opto creates a very, very easy way to allow all of those users access into that patient information, but in a very safe, secure way that's audited, logged, and also done um, knowing that the hospital or the HIPAA or um, whatever kind of healthcare um, compliance policies are there, that they're being abided across you know, the whole platform. So whether they're accessing their application from an on-prem pharmacy application that might have you know, that information in, whether they're um, looking at their charts on a cloud platform, um, or even if they're looking at kind of written down information on their file. So we've seen a lot of users um, moving to use multi-factor. We've also seen a lot of um, doctor and nurses portals. So creating individual portals for them to access to be able to leverage that information very easily. We've also seen a um, kind of wealth of provider and payer portals through to ease that financial um, workflow to really help you kind of allow different providers to pay, you know, insurances in America. And of course, then if the, um, if the individual is then going to pay a little bit and then also, you know, any other um, businesses that may be involved in that, in that particular patient's care, whether that might be outpatient treatment afterwards, maybe um, physiotherapy, something like that. You know, again, they can all access those portals in one place. And of course, most importantly, I think to the customer, in which case, unfortunately, the customer is then a patient, um, is the unified view of patient information, allowing a real kind of holistic view of how they are healthcare wise. They're not stuck with, OK, we can't see this information from this hospital or this provider because we can't see that portal. Everything is one place. And it also provides a secure digital onboarding of patients. So if you join a new um, doctors or if you move um, or maybe even if you have a child and you're registering them it will do it all within a secure digital location. Now retail is a massive user of Okta for not only their internal customers but also their external customers like you and me. Now a lot of purchases are shifting to online channels and I think that's no surprise to a lot of people and I think we are much more picky in what we buy. We want that discount, we want that loyalty scheme, we want those points or whatever it might be. And there's also quite a big churn in terms of employees. And that's often because they might be in-store employees who do tend to um, kind of move around a little bit more often, whether that's in terms of internally. So moving from say store staff to management to then going into kind of um, regional divisional management. Um, and there's also a lot of kind of moving and leaving as well um, within the stores. Now, of course, quickly onboarding and offboarding is really difficult to scale across high churn employees. So Octa's automated lifecycle management can really ease that burden. And of course, building personalised and effective, you know, actually attractive loyalty programs can be really, really difficult. <coughs> So we've seen a lot of um, users leveraging um, SSO into legacy systems using um, our Okta Access Gateway and also our advanced server access if they are looking to access the servers there on-prem. We've seen a lot of um, partner kind of management and vendor management through online portals and just making that kind of purchasing experience from their vendors more seamless through to then the logistics and then through to obviously into the stores. 
and a much more focus, a much bigger focus on the unified view of, of the customer. So wanting to know, okay, has this customer bought from any of our partner services or um, retail channels before? How does this customer normally engage with us? How does this customer tend to um, kind of purchase our services? What do they tend to buy? And then using that to either market more effectively to them or just really understanding your customer base and how they are actually interacting with your um, platforms. Our government customers, of course, we have lots of different um, government customers, central and local, using Okta. And they might be using it for um, keeping up with constituents. So hundreds, well, thousands, millions of user accounts there for different services. You think about all of the different online services we have now for things like council tax, bin collections. Um, our local tip has a booking service online. And all of that needs a secure way to pass that information through. We have a big focus on modernizing systems and pushing us, um, pushing kind of government services into this more hybrid or cloud-based approach. And of course, the compliance and regulatory factors around the data that's being put in there is really paramount. You know, it could be life or death in these types of situations. So we have seen a lot of identity modernization in government, and we've also seen a lot of focus on multi-factor with um, PIV cards or kind of more physical um, extra factors, which of course Okta can do very, very easily. We've seen um, a lot of business to business applications also then, um, you know, for other agencies or third parties that they work with, be secured using SSO with multi-factor because you can use something just like a text message. It's very easy for the end user there of that other business to just pop their number in when they set your account up and get that text through. It doesn't require a whole lot of kind of workload on the user there. So often it's really easy to get them to actually buy into. And of course, for the citizens in this case, which is their customers, we've, of course, seen a massive improvement in online services and, of course, a focus on the experience there as well. And I think that actually kind of as, as a user of their services, we've become more kind of expectant in the fact that we want to be able to access that information at home. We don't want to have to ring somebody. Um, and we also want to be able to amend our own information or see what information they have on us um, at the click of a button. And I think that's where Okta has really been kind of integral in that modernization there, because it is allowing kind of users to have more ownership of their own data and their information as well. Now, education is um, a very difficult one because often it can be very very low funded um, and it can be difficult to be able to put money into um, IT services and of course IT modernization. There's often a very quick push in turnaround so ROI has to be very very fast um, because they're often kind of viewed on a year by year basis. If you're not getting return on that investment in the following year, it can sometimes be a very hard sell to the board or whoever you have to go to in procurement to get something in the budget. Um, there's also an issue around human bodies. There's not enough people working in um, education sectors of, often to actually be able to dedicate a lot of time into this. And also education is a very, very highly targeted industry. So there is a lot of kind of security challenges that can get in the way of actually just transforming the infrastructure. So how does Okta assist in this? Well, first of all, of course, we can help with those phishing protection, um, with that phishing protection, sorry, um, with a multi-factor. We can also automate the onboarding and offboarding. And if you can imagine of you know, how many thousands of students a school or college or university may get every single year, being able to automate what applications they're getting access to based on, say, what degree or subject or area that they're doing can be massively um, kind of time saving for those end users there. Of course, we can give SSO to the users, in this case, the students and staff and faculty members. And this gives them a better end user experience as well, and also allows them to use the services that the university or school has to kind of their best potential. And of course, um, for any of students or um, kind of alumni donors or even parents, 
they can get access to that data again. So again, users are now expecting being able to see their data and also update information such as their address, phone number, email address, etc. themselves. And by allowing them access into this by Okta, you're doing it all, but not only just in kind of a free for all way, it's in a secure space. So they can still update their email address, etc. And it can still then update it in your Active Directory if you wanted it to, but also it could just then just stay in Okta um, and not write back to there to avoid any problems as well. Now, financial customers, often there's a much more focus on kind of privacy of data and also integrity is very, very important to these um, businesses, mainly because when we're dealing with money, your integrity is everything. So maintaining competitive advantage is very important as well, because there are a lot of fish in a very big, very small pond here. <laughs> and of course, there's a still a lot of modernization happening because those end users are still expecting that modernization of services. We're still expecting more kind of um, more ownership of our data and also the ability to do more services online. You know, nowadays, um, I recently bought a house, for example, and I never saw anybody. I did it all online, you know, apart from seeing the house. <laughs> I never I never met a mortgage advisor um, face to face. We never had to do any of that. Everything is done online now. And, it, you know, even my mum, my dad, they said it's crazy because years ago you would have had to go in to an appointment at the bank and speak to them and go in, you know, maybe three or four times and spend three or four hours of your time. And I thought to myself, well, I would never do that. I just go somewhere else. And I think this is this change in the customer's expectation. You must be able to deliver me what I want in the easiest and simplest way that has prevents me having to come to you. Because if you're not going to come to me, I'm just going to somebody else. And, and that's kind of the industry that we're in now. And I think a lot of different areas, but especially in the financial um, sectors now. So Okta, of course, can help with those regulatory requirements because we can use MFA. We can also simplify moving and acquisition as well. And of course, we can automate all of those costly processes that are really laborious for internal users, such as, you know, their bank staff, head office staff, phone staff, etc. And then also for their customers in terms of, you know, their banking customers then as well. We also allow much easier integration with partner and vendor systems. We can also create a really nice um, financial ecosystem with business where they can choose specialist integration partners that they can then sort of offshoot you to um, for services that they don't do themselves. And then of course, be able to still track that user and be able to see, you know, did you go ahead and um, complete that application and then have that information on their file as well. And of course, then prompting for secondary factors if they're going to do a large transfer. Um, often nowadays, you know, even places like Barclays, Lloyd, Santander, I think all of kind of the major banks now in the UK, you are required to use an extra factor, whether that's using a physical um, pin reading machine that you'd have, um, or whether that's using your mobile app or a text message or a phone call. Most of the time now, if you are going to do any kind of large transaction or new transactions with a new person, they will require you to verify it. Now, I know that's been a bit of a baptism of fire into Okta, all of the different ways that we can assist in on-prem, hybrid and cloud identity. I really wanted to encourage everyone today to come along to our discovery workshops because it allows you to get hands on with Okta. It also allows you to learn from people who may currently be using Okta and also Okta certified engineers as well. So you can find out about best practices, what it's like in the real world in terms of administrating it and updating it. And also just get some hands on kind of access and know OK, is this going to work for my business? Is this going to work for my team? Because you always know better than anyone else how your team is going to adapt to a product or software and whether or not it's going to work for the way that you, um, you know, manage your identity currently. And also if it's going to fit in with your methodology for the future. So our next Octa workshop is completely free of charge and remote. We're doing it on the 2nd of February, 10 to 1. We also have another one in on the 9th of March coming into next year. It's funny to be talking about next year already. <laughs> but I suppose it is um, December now. And 
we have the workflows workshop there on the 9th of March and workflows will allow you to do kind of more of that automated workflowing um, of different processes that may be outside of Okta as well, which is a really, really great feature to just kind of be able to hook into all of your different platforms and services. So I know that might have been a bit of a, um, <laughs> a bit of an information overload, overload on a Wednesday morning. But I just wanted to leave some time for questions. Um, and of course, if you don't have any, please feel free to jump off. I just really appreciate your time this morning. Of course, if you have any, please pop them in the chat now. If you have any that you'd like to get to us after today, please feel free to send them through to us on our website. So if you just go to somersetassociates.com, come up here to contact us, and then you can just go ahead and either send it through to help and support if you're a current customer or if you're going to be looking at Octa as a new um, product, just come down here to contact us and it will get through to either me or one of the team and we'll be able to um, answer your question or maybe jump on a one-on-one -on -one demo or a call um, just to be able to really understand your requirements and how we can help. I'll go ahead and close the webinar now here. Of course, any questions, please get in touch and I really hope to see you at that workshop in February. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and take care.